over the last year, Ruby on Rails has done a lot to improve the developer experience out of the box. Now, whenever you create a new Ruby on Rails application, you've got a GitHub CI that works uh, straight away. You have uh, uh, a Docker file, you've got uh, up to date Git Ignore, you even have uh, a Robocop that is installed uh, with some default configuration in any new Ruby on Rails application. But I think something that is still missing from uh, new Ruby on Rails applications is uh, a list of recommended uh, extensions for VS Code, for Corsair, for similar uh, IDEs. So uh, you can add this uh, separate folder .vs code into your application and it will give uh, a list of recommended uh, plugins. And here I have the recommended plugins for my application. So whenever somebody new opens my application, it's going to prompt them to add these plugins to work in their uh, development environment. And there's also a separate file, settings.json, where you can define different settings for each of these plugins. Let's go through all the plugins. First of all, I have pretty VS Code. It uh, helps me style the CSS and JS files. For example, I'm going to go to Mentions Controller. I'm going to save this file. I just clicked on uh, uh, Command S and you see it formatted the file. And this way uh, I format all the files and uh, they are going to all conform to the same uh, style. And again, if you don't like, uh, for example, you want to have uh, uh, two uh, instead of one uh, uh, brace, you can uh, set this in the uh, settings.json for uh, pretty adjust VS Code. Then there is VS Code Tailwind CSS. For example, I'm going to open a static file, static index. Uh, and uh, whenever I type something in Tailwind, for example, I want to add padding of 12 pixels. I type P and uh, I see that pattern of 12 pixels is P3. Okay, so it kind of prompts me what the CSS is behind the, the relevant abstractions like background rows 400. I see all the details of this class. So this is the VS Code Telvin CSS. Then there's the plugin uh, named Headwind and it gives an opinionated ordering of the Tailwind classes. So whenever I'm going to save this file, it is going to reorder the Tailwind classes in uh, an opinionated way. But I think it's good to have uh, uh, one defined uh, order of Tailwind classes all uh, around, than just having them scattered uh, uh, wherever in your uh, class definition. Uh, next, there is GitLens. This one is really nice. Uh, uh, so you see, whenever I hover on the line of code, I see when it was edited last time and I can jump to this comment. I go to this other comment, I see when it was edited. So uh, it makes uh, finding what was changed and when, by whom, uh, much easier. Then th there is Ruby LSP, the uh, tool to work with Ruby. There's uh, EIB formatter. This one actually requires a uh, gem, the gem EIB formatter to be installed and uh, how it works. So this is an EIB file. I'm going to change the formatting. I'm going to save the file and you see everything is uh, formatted nicely. So no weird spacings. Uh, then uh, if you're using the VS Code, then you can also recommend GitHub Copilot and GitHub co Copilot Chat, but for other code editors, I would not recommend them. Uh, like for Cursor, it doesn't make sense. Uh, then there is Stimulus LSP by Mark Roth that uh, helps you with writing the stimulus controllers. For example, I'm going to try to define uh, data controller uh, ABC. And uh, in theory, it should tell me that this is not a valid uh, controller now. Uh, stimulus. Oh yeah, I don't have this one installed uh, uh, yet. So let me install stimulus LSP. Okay, and you see now it gives me an error. Uh, ABC is not a valid stimulus controller. Uh, then there's uh, Rubocop, uh, VS Code Rubocop, and uh, let me go to like user.rb. I'm going to uh, define something like foo equals bar and I uh, see the errors that style string literals prefer double quoted. I'm going to save and you see it was formatted out of the box. Then I'm going to add like some uh, 
Trail and white spaces here. I see that there is a problem, but I click save and you see it is uh, saved and formatted. So I don't have to uh, run separate formatter. Everything is uh, formatted on save. Now to enable formatting on save, I uh, go to VS Code settings. You need to click format on save here. And uh, again, in settings.json, I uh, uh, say format on save true for each of these uh, formatters. Also, sometimes you would want to save something without formatting. For example, like I'm going to format this, but I don't want the formatting to be in my diff. I'm going to click Ctrl Z to not have uh, all this formatting. And I'm going to uh, open the uh, kind of terminal and I will save without formatting. So the file is saved, but uh, no formatting was uh, applied. This is also sometimes handy when you want to uh, commit just one change without uh, having the diff of all the uh, styling.